Hi everyone, uh, I'm Crow, or Anxious Anarchist Poetry on Facebook, and uh, it's really great to be part of uh, Leeds LGBTQ Lit, Lit Fest. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. Reading from my uh, debut collection, just released, I Am A Thing Of Rough Edges. You can get it on the Whiskey And Beards uh, web store, or there's links in my social media I'll give you at the end. Um, yeah, I'll get straight into it. This is D and Dating. Roll for initiative. This club's full of door guy. We're playing real life D and D, and I and the character rolling through this setting like the fellowship through ballad dust. They must have left and right with the swell of my charisma. I know you came with your party, but forget them like fourth edition. It won't be a difficult feat, babe, because I know every position. We'll break out the battle map for a war of attrition. I've got high decks but low wisdom, so I'm damned for some bad decisions. My chat up lines are natural twenties. When I roll for damage, you'll say, like, I've had plenty. Packed to the chain, tie me up if you fancy. I just hope you're not into necromancy. Not saying you can't race me, but you don't need a ritual. I'm really quite easy, my needs are habitual. I don't need a spell book to conjure celestial, so trust me when I say that this relief is spiritual. Barbarians rage when I turn on the charm, but my high constitution will save you from the harm. My divine piety favours quite disarm, and my lay on hands might cause you some alarm. When I get my second wind, you'll be down for the count. But if you roll a high perception, you can explore this wild mount. So just a coin to this witch's bank account, you'll leave with a legendary tale to recount. Extract aspects on the streets, flurry of blows in the sheets. Karate swift as these beats, patient defence on repeat. I'm just looking for a person to hold. So watch out for my cone of cold. Like, sex isn't my end goal. But when I bring out my dice, it's a critical role. My sexuality did come with a handbook. But I'm writing the master's guide. Now. How would you like to do this? Oh, thank you. That was my first one. Oh, I'm really enjoying uh, recording this. This is a lot of fun. I get to just do what I want. And no one can shout at me. This is fine. We'll see how this goes, won't we? Uh, next up, I'll do a uh, the most requested poem I think I've ever written, which is Cuddle Drive. I don't have a libido. I've got a cuddle drive. Cruising through space at a casual 45, not stopping or starting or anything so contrived. I don't need anything else. This is where I thrive. Cuddles, my friend, are enough to revive. Cause you see it on TV. Everywhere everyone needs to bone, I'm indifferent to this plight. And it makes me feel quite alone. The media will have you believe that this society's backbone, but honestly out of proportion this shit has been blown. I'm also a big proponent of cuddling your friends. And showing them affection not as a means, but an end. Because we need to love each other. We need to make amends and usher in a world where cuddling is the trend. I hop back on board and set off towards the stars. And I take your hand as we rocket past Mars. We're safe up here. This galaxy is ours. My cuddle drive is full and we're going to travel far. I'm a spacefaring, planet hopping, new age romantic, and you're making my heart beat really quite frantic. Just let me say I don't want to be so pedantic, but you swell my cuddle drive and make it gigantic. So come with me and I'll show you the universe. New planets and peoples and cultures you can immerse. We'll bed down at night and binge Steven Universe and cuddle, of course. I have a debt I need to reimburse. He showed me it was okay to keep my feet on the ground. You helped offload my issues, you left me spellbound. I'll never be the same, this terrain is fresh ground, but all thanks to you, my love is earthbound. Woo! Blistering pace. I've got like two, two thirds of my time left, this is great. Uh, I, I, I generally like spiel between poems, but there's no one to like riff off of. I guess that's the same for most online uh, gigs at this point, really, but uh, you make it work. Just stood in my living room, my laptop on my cat tower, and I'm talking to myself. I'm having a great time. Uh, it's great. It's wonderful. Uh, yeah, next poem is going to be technically the uh, titular poem 
of the book, even though the title isn't the title of the book. You'll see. It makes sense in a bit. Uh, yeah. This is Pigskin. Being mentally ill is a transcendent experience. The world doesn't work like it's told to you. Instead of square pegs and round holes, it's a block of wood and you can't sleep. Don't worry about job interviews and coffee dates, because you'll be falling through layers of blankets for what feels like years. The world is built on money and connection, but all you know how to process is misery and desperation. The world will step over you as you sift through thoughts as thick as pigskin. Looking for the way out of this torrent of raised voices and good intentions. Searching for the blankets, the security, the hole your peg is meant to fit into, but you don't know what shape yours is. Or if it changes. Or if there's even a hole for you to fit. I am a thing of rough edges. I don't have a shape. My block is worn and covered in scratches and I can't sleep. The world doesn't work like it's meant to. Thanks, that was pigskin. I'm just going to bob. I'm bobbing. This is great. This is wonderful. <sighs> Flicking through my book. Oh, this is great. Uh, next up, I'm going to do a political piece that I wrote a few years ago, um, that, which was in response to the Christchurch shooting. And obviously, we've just had uh, lots of recent reports of more shootings. And it's a problem that apparently is never going to end as long as America, you know, has guns. But <sighs> anyway, this is Internet War. In a world where YouTubers influence mass shooters and politicians blame it on the victims, there's no argument you can make to claim that they're not interconnected. The pipeline to fascism is more streamlined than ever before. And we're sat here on Facebook fighting this arbitrary internet war. We share articles from BuzzFeed while the planet dies around us. And local anti-fracking groups block streets with boats and bus. Defenders details are posted on far-right surveillance forums. We're being catalogued and profiled, but fighting back is against decorum? Fuck that noise. It's not good enough. I've got a manifesto of my own. Save the bees, plant more trees, clear the seas, shoot Nazis. I'll cut the issue right down to the bone. Because while the information is there, ripe for misunderstanding, we get reports of an angelic boy in the papers flashing white power hand signs in court. He's only ever seen a halo in handcuffs. This kid who rolls his blunts in Bible verses is suddenly the new messiah, but his knees don't hold the bruises of hours of prayer. No, they're clean, like his hands, even when they part the Red Seas of his victims. Even after when he stops counting every bullet, he shoots as if each one brings him closer to God. But his nan thought he was such a good boy. The papers thought he was such a good boy. The media thought he was such a good boy. God forbid we use the word terrorist to describe a white man. Thank you. Bit angry there, but it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll continue. This is, this is fine. Apologies, but it's about to get sad. Time for some queer poems. Like, proper queer poems, but, you know, the only actual, like, obviously queer poems in my book are sad and angry. Uh, the, m most of the loved ones are also queer, but it's harder to, you know, make that obvious. Anyway, this first one is uh, My History of Queerness. Uh, content warnings for uh, homophobic slurs, uh, discussion of all kinds of uh, queer phobia in here, transphobia, homophobia, Ace Erasure, all of that. Also, so a bit of talk about, a uh, bit of an implication of rape as well. My history of queerness. I knew I wasn't straight at the age of 12. When I thought a boy in my class was drop dead gorgeous. He sat with his mates at lunch and joked about how much of a faggot Gok Wan looked on TV last night. I didn't tell him. I knew I was asexual at the age of 16. When talk about sex chewed me out of conversations, 
One friend made a joke about a girl he liked who wasn't interested in having sex with him. He said he'd find a way. I didn't tell him. I knew I was trans at the age of 19 when I started questioning the roles of men and women in society and why we so rigorously stuck to just the two. I borrowed my girlfriend's skirt just to try it on. She laughed so hard she fell off a chair. I didn't tell her. Whew. Uh, one more sad one for you. Apologies. And then I'll move back to the nice stuff, I guess. So uh, for the last few years, I've written poems for Trans Day of Remembrance, which is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is a day when we uh, mourn our dead that have been murdered in the last year. And there's a list of uh, death statistics posted on that day every year. And for the last two years, I've written poems from that. And this is uh, the one from last year. It's called 350 or May Their Memory Be a Blessing. Obviously, content warnings for transphobia and uh, discussion of death and murder. 350 is an even composite number composed of three prime numbers multiplied together. In the year 350, Julius Napasianus, Roman usurper, proclaims himself emperor and enters Rome with a group of gladiators. Napasianus is defeated and killed in the same year, his head put on a spear and paraded throughout the city. Page 350 of WTF Fun Facts states that according to a study, a spoiled book may be more enjoyable because knowing the ending allows the reader to focus on other details. 350 transgender people were killed in the last year, bringing the stats up to 3,664 deaths since records began 12 years ago. The first person killed this year didn't have their name reported or their age or occupation. All we know is that their apartment was trashed and a knife was found and nobody was prosecuted. Michelle is the last dot on a map that isn't even half finished because entire continents don't contribute. Stabbed to death in the neck on the 30th of September 2020. Age unknown. Occupation unknown. This yearly ritual of reading through these lists, subjecting ourselves to horrors that should be beyond imagining, serve as a reminder of how this world sees us as disposable, as abominations, as something that needs to be cleansed. Number 93, Hilary Medina, shot. Number 79, Giselle Catrine, shot. Number 99, Bruno Oliveira, shot. Number 30, shot. Number 118, shot. 349, shot. 288, shot. 108, shot. Shot, shot, shot. Stabbed, stabbed, stabbed. Beaten, beaten, hanged, stoned, burned, tortured. When will it be enough? How many more people have to die before the world realise that, that realises that we are just that? People. How many more lists do we need to read and mourn and cry over and rage over? How much more can we take? Because I am sick of being told to sit back, to approach things peacefully, to jump through hoops while our kin are being slaughtered. I am sick of watching these lists come in year by year, more lives snuffed out too soon, killed for being who they are. Every year, our rights are debated in the Commons, in the Senate. Whether we deserve to live comfortably, free of harassment, free of self-hatred and dysphoria, free of the ignorant plight of the powerful. Or whether we deserve to live at all. How much more do we have to take? Because this is a chance to protest and a desperate plea for help. Because I'm scared for my friends and myself because one of us could be next. Next. 
It's literally a matter of a life and death, as the list's always a test. We've fought this war for so damn long, don't we deserve a rest? They never care enough to use our names, but instead just scoff. And dead name victims in most any case, a last dig at any cost. Year by year we are degraded, laughed at and dismissed. But we are poets, sex workers, artists, not just a bunch of misfits. We are sick of being ignored. As history is doomed to repeat itself, we need to stand together to show that we will not be shelved and parade around in protest with pride, flag, pride flags raised on high. Just another sign that we will no longer sit idly by. Honestly, all of this unfocused anger won't help us to resist. And I still feel like I'm destined to be added to the list. <sighs> Thank you, I know that was quite heavy. Allow me to finish on a lighter note. So this next poem, I need to assume the stance here. This is a proper Shakespearean ode. It's called An Ode to a Pigeon. And uh, yeah, I've got to assume the stance. Okay, Ode to a Pigeon. Oh, thou flying rat, why hast thou shat upon my hand? Thank you, that was Ode to a Pigeon. <laughs> and finally, uh, the last poem in this book is called uh, Things I Probably Shouldn't Put in My Tinder Bio, but I'm not going to be reading it now, and so I'm going to throw over, and there's going to be a fully edited video uh, made by Inkbomb and Sven Steers, and if you like it, you should definitely check it out on YouTube. It's going to be playing for you in just a second. And yeah, enjoy, and it's been my set. I've been Crow Rudd. Uh, Anxious Anarchist Poetry on Facebook, uh, at Stuff Punks Do with an X on Twitter and Instagram. And yeah, have a great day and enjoy the rest of the festival. Bye! I was born in 1996 as Thomas Mark Crossland. Birthed into this melting pot of violence and addiction by the time I was three, I had scars from operations, scars from accidents, scars. And I don't remember any of it. My memory doesn't stretch back into single digits. My mother, in her infinite wisdom, didn't quite like the way that rolled off the tongue, so I became Thomas Mark Rudd. Not sure why she kept the middle name, a match to cauterise the wound perhaps, so I figured that enough was enough. I couldn't keep being this reminder of his neglect. By 13, I had dabbled in churches. New Age prayer circles, Christian rock bands and... Well, when I realised I was queer, I got my first silver chip. You see, fire and brimstone's a hell of a thing when you're being tempered in the heat. By 17, I was a lot more queer and a lot more into hurting myself, so I dropped the chip and went back to church and I started smoking and fucking and fucking and smoking and... I've always been ace. So I was never really into it, just what the cool kids were doing and fuck did I want to be cool. Meanwhile, the smoking turned to drinking and the drinking turned to drugs and then back into drinking and still into smoking and back into hurting myself in every way that I could and thinking, no, knowing that I could never do any good. So as I struggled to pick up the pieces of my life from the plush carpet of my parents' disappointment, I pieced together a phone. And use the flashlight to spill ink from rotting ribs. I turned myself inside out. And started writing. Cataloguing every flaw. Every mistake. To improve. That's where I am now. Strapped down to stainless steel. Open and bloody and raw. A dissection of lapses of judgment, 
An arterial map of mistakes and regrets, frayed nerves and crossed wires. I don't call myself Thomas anymore. I think that person died when I decided to take responsibility. When I cracked my ribs open, they oozed out onto the floor. Spoiled ink from a broken pen. I'm not quite sure what I am yet. I guess what I'm trying to say is... Hi, I'm Crow. I'm 24. Non-binary. York. Not interested in hookups. I'm passionate about hand-holding. And the destruction of capitalism.